Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, Scardifist here, and this is going to be a impressions of patch 1.21. I've had time to kind of go over a lot of the big changes on stream and to kind of see uh, where the new meta lies within this game, if you will. I mean, I hate using meta, but that's probably the best way I can describe because... Um, these changes because a lot of things have happened and uh, certain army compositions are no longer as viable as they were uh, prior to patch 1.21. Now before I even get into any more detail regarding this patch, uh, I just want to make something very clear and that is school has gotten, and most of you already know this, but very fucking busy for me. Uh, this week, which is currently December 1st, so yeah, the week of December 1st is where a lot of fucking shit uh, hits the fan for me like I got exams papers everything like crunched up within this week I'm still gonna be able to make my streaming uh, times of Thursday uh, Friday and Saturday for the most part um, I'll let you guys know if I can but just know that uh, the reason why I haven't been able to put out as much content as I would lately is just because we're heading to that time of the year where, you know, everyone gets busy and yeah, it's just, ugh, everything is so fucked right now. Uh, but the good news is that probably after this week, I got one week of a slight reprieve to just do studying for like one exam. Like all my shit hits me early and then I have like a two week intermission and then I have like a final exam and that's about it. Now... That isn't the only reason why I haven't been able to put out content for Freeman in particular. Uh, the other reason is because when patch 1.14, 1.1 or whatever came out, um, I was unable to adjust as quickly as I wanted to. And I wasn't playing well. I was playing like complete garbage. So yeah, here we are. I mean, many of you who haven't been able to catch the streams will see that this does not look like what the previous episode looks like. I've said it before. I think I got like 50 episodes or so that are just in stream VODs that have been meticulously trying to edit and get out uh, onto the YouTube. Actually, I think I have one loading right now set to release at a, you know, a week or so. But for those of you who uh, just have not been able to see the progress or are wondering if we've made any progress, we have. We're in the late game. Uh, you look at my level right now. I'm level 101. Uh, maxed out everything. So I, I think I got a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about when I say that certain things are good or not. You know, like obviously this is just proof that I have some uh, some experience under my belt, if you know what I mean. Right. So yeah, let's finally get into uh, the impressions and the difference between this and the previous video is because the previous video was me just like making a rough assessment of prediction. I had no idea if what I was saying was going to be true because I hadn't actually played the patch. So everything you're hearing now is after I've had time to test uh, the patch on stream and whatnot. So yeah, let's get into uh, the biggest thing. Uh, Starting with the biggest thing, right? And that is the complete change on the SR100. So obviously, I don't name my squads because I'm lazy as shit. But um, the biggest change is going to... Not the SR100, sorry. The Spetsnaz Troopers. I, I use SR100 so many times, it just gets used to it, guys. The, every word that starts with an S, I'm assuming it's SR100. Anyway, yeah. Biggest troop is to the Spetsnaz. So prior to uh, this patch, Spetsnaz were insanely strong with shotguns. Uh, the devs have since n completely redistributed their, redistributed their power to Assault Rifle. Now, if you remember correctly, when Spetsnaz troops were first introduced, camera refocus, <laughs> when Spetsnaz troops were first introduced, they were introduced as, and this is before you had the level cap at 15, this was when they were essentially kind of like your end game troop. They were completely busted. They, they, the equivalent of what the pause and the sharpshooters were back when you had vehicles. They just tap everything out of the fucking water, right? Especially if you gave them night vision and good armor. They had, you know, if you bought them, if you bought them with a full price at forty nine k or sixty k, depending on you know what your stats were, you could get them or sixty k at the time. Yeah, you could get armor blacks. You know, seven the seventy two armor protection of the chest piece, extremely fucking rare, and then. They'd just be unstoppable, simply put it like that. They'd have the best gear, and if they, they you know, since the level cap wasn't at 15, you could max out every single, uh, what should I call it? Well, not every single, but you get close to maxing out the firearm proficiencies that matter. Now, uh, oh man, the camera is actually blocking this, so let me actually show you guys what I mean, uh, just to prove my point. Oh, I alt-tabbed accidentally. 
But here you go. As you can see, guys, uh, assault rifle now is 97. Oh my god, is this still not smaller? And oh, gotta move this again. Okay, right, moving it to this side because the proficiencies matter for this uh, breakdown or whatever. But you see right over here, shotgun nerf from 100 to 38. Now, what this means in general is that. And also, they got more affordable because they no longer hold that good of a weapon uh, if you buy them in full. They're holding, like, basic M416s or whatever. So basically what the old VFA fighters had, um, or what they have in standard gear, right? But anyway, what this means in terms of balance and changes is that your Spetsnaz troops are going to be the troops that you want to put into your cities. Now, I don't know if many of you have this problem or not, but I'm pretty sure it can't be just a problem that I'm experiencing. When you get to the late game and you start blitzing these other cities... You're going to want to put troops into your cities, you, you know, garrison. But the problem is, you're not going to have enough, especially when you start taking over shit rapidly. Like, no one's going to say, you, when you see an opportunity to take a city, you're going to take it. You're not just going to, you know, at least for me, I'm not just, you're not just going to sit around and like put nine in the city and then wait to train those nine back up to 15. That's going to take way too fucking long. You're going to put nine or three or five or whatever number you can, you know, muster and go to the next city. And then you're going to take that city and do the same thing over and over. Now, the problem this blitz tactic presents to you is that you simply, and you can take a look at the numbers, after multiple sieges, you will not have more than double digit defenders into your city because training them up is not going to be enough. And buying them full geared is just going to be a waste of money because they're level one. They're going to die anyway. You know, the AI is going to take advantage of that. So pretty much anything below level six or seven is going to die instantly. But training them up takes so much time as well that you're really caught between a rock and a hard place. Do you just fill the city to, until the AI doesn't attack it, which they won't? be disawaited on higher difficulty right or do you wait behind and just constantly painstakingly grind it out and wait see i chose the lad the former i chose to blitz it out and you know so far it's worked but i've had the past four streams that i've been playing freeman for a little bit i've had to constantly run my ass back and forth to defend these cities or retake it and you can see right now guys minov is about to fall Drobin's in trouble garika's in trouble i lost zinkov and aber uh, the first two cities that I actually ended up taking to fucking ban is because I simply was dealing with so many uprisings, so many problems over here. Not to mention you got to drop in repairs. Now, back to the thing that I was mentioning about, because we're going off a little bit off topic, but back to what I was mentioning about Spetsnaz. They probably best now becoming your official, uh, dis you know, guardsmen troops like these are the kind of guys you want to hire to defend your city you know you build a building and you can recruit them from anywhere uh, yeah they're probably best bet doing that right now uh the the change in power i, I don't want to call this a nerf but uh, you know it's like i was always saying ai tend to always use the uh shotguns better than the player will they always will because that bug shot's gonna hit you and it's gonna cause some damage right but you don't i don't think uh, Spetsnaz are good anymore as your troops for nighttime fighting, like your, you know, the regular troop you go to in battles. I think honestly, their power now, especially with the fact that the AI is super aggressive, I think it's a lot better. You put them in a city, you give them an assault rifle, and you say defend it. I could be wrong, but I've tested this out, and I have a lot better results just putting these guys in cities. They're still squishy, you know, 282 HP. It's not that good. I mean, it's good, but. You're better off just putting them in a city and having them defend it. And, like, that eliminates the problem as well of having you hire militia troops or whatever, or whatever you can in the clandestine ba or regular bar barracks. I can't believe I was trying to say clandestine, but whatever, right? Now, second biggest change that I've also noticed is that uh, your machine gunner troops are still busted as hell. Uh, I think there was a slight nerf on your shock troopers. At least I thought there would be a nerf. Um, you know, the proficiency for shock troopers, I thought that would be, I thought it was decreased. I don't know for too, for certain, but it doesn't seem to have impacted shock troopers too much. In fact, of anything, they're still really strong, really effective. So your machine gunner troops still reign supreme. Now, the shock trooper, especially after I looked at the federal machine gunner, in fact, let me, let me show that to you guys really quickly. Uh, the federal machine gunner, you can see these are all these troops over here. They, they're not armed like they're fucking yeah i have to throw them in but the federal machine gunners if i can actually find them are 
extremely good because they have 100% machine gun proficiency, but they're insanely weak on health. I think they got 280, 260 HP. That's not going to fly. So I actually thought in the previous video that if they buffed Federal Machine Gunners, this would be the end to Shock Troopers. But because Shock Troopers have such good health, even, I know they used to have like 400, 500, whatever, but 395 health is insane. It is still great. And the fact that they come with the helmet makes it even better. Now, obviously, they don't have the best chest pieces, but they've proven to be some of the most durable troops in the entire game, often, you know, taking a lot of damage and still only going towards wounded rather than dying. Shock Troopers still have a place in your army. In fact, I would recommend running one squad of Machine Gunners, Federal, if you can afford them, and one, sh uh, one set of Shock Troopers, or even two. Uh, they're obviously very expensive, so you're only going to be looking to get this when you have probably over 600,000 Zalti, because you're going to want to buy this in bulk, and you want to protect them, because they're super vulnerable. Now, speaking of Shock Troopers, usually uh, speaking, bleh, I can't believe I said speaking twice, but usually the FCA get fucking crushed. In my situation, I'm lucky that they're still alive into man and you know over time they're going to want to form an alliance as you get stronger you know every faction is going to want to do this but particularly the fca especially if they're down to the last bullet and you don't really want to harm them right now uh it might be wise to actually get an alliance with them just to buy out a bunch of shock troopers now obviously i don't take alliances because the dragon cartel doesn't suffer any of them but uh, that's because of stream and whatever right Obviously, it is a good idea because they're a pretty rare troop to get an alliance, go to Tamanakiv or whatever city that they possibly still hold on to. I mean, they had Minov when I started the game, but they've since lost it, right? And get get your shock troopers is what I'm trying to say. Get your shock troopers, get your uh, machine gunner units. Now, on the top of that note as well, who replaces the Spetsnaz as your go-to kind of um, nighttime troop? Like, who replaces them in the troop slot, right? Now, I don't know if any of you guys ran them before, but you were stupid. Well, not stupid, but you were missing out if you didn't run them, right? So who's going to replace them? And, you know, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I honestly have to give it to the Solitary Wolf Scouts. Now, I know these guys are extremely fucking squishy, even more so than Spetsnaz, but you look at that sight, you look at that speed, and you look at the Assault Rifle Proficiency, as well as the SMG, you have got something that is very, very powerful over here. Now, remember, the Spetsnaz... Remember the Spetsnaz, they used to also have really, really good SMG proficiency. You don't have to just give uh, your Solitary Wolf Scouts... Assault rifles. You can have one designated for SMGs, which are cheaper than assault rifles, mind you, and one designated over to assault rifle. Now, obviously, them being squishy is going to be a little bit of a problem, but if you run two sets of these and you give a max gear, you're not going to lose as many, right? You're not going to lose as many as you would... Uh, as you would hope to. In fact, most of them are probably going to survive if you're smart. The only reason why I've lost so many is because I've been playing aggressively in a patch that kind of punishes over-aggression. Okay, so moving on uh, towards FCA Grenadiers. I really want to touch on those. These guys are no longer good. FC, you'll notice that I used to have a bunch of them. They're all gone for the simple reason that what the Cossack Rebels do are just is just better than the FCA Grenadiers. Uh, they have been, it used to be these guys were identical. The only difference was that the Cossack Rebels were, had 0.5 speed better. Since then, uh, things have changed. The FCA Grenadiers are below 1.0 speed. Their proficiency at, isn't even that good anymore. I mean, they're just, they're just not as good as they used to be. Oh, here's the machine gunner I was talking about. Yeah, as you can see, yeah, 100 H. Look, he's only level 11, but he's going to get up to the point where he has like 280, 260 health. He's going to be good, right? But back to the point of your Cossack Rebels and your FCA Grenadiers. If you want a Grenadier or Projectile Troop, you're going to go with your Cossack Rebels. Now, be sure you do a better job of protecting them than I did because these guys will drop quicker and faster than the FCA Grenadiers. With that said, though, the FCA Grenadiers aren't as durable as they used to be. So the difference and the reason to keep them on because of their durability is long been um nullified like their durability is no longer worth sacrificing the stats of your Cossack rebels it's just better if you get these guys and honestly after a certain point they're a lot easier to get because you just have to raid Cossack rebel camps which you know they'll probably take bravari uh, at some point in the game and they have a bunch of camps that spawn in this little south um east region right this is the best spot to farm xp farm weapons, farm quests to get your rare weapons and shit that's no longer available in the black market. So yes, your Cossack Rebels have replaced your uh, FCA Grenadiers as your official projectile troop. I That's what I would recommend. Now, moving on towards the black market. I Maybe this is due to my save because I, I, I this save is started in like 
what 1.0 beta but like literally two weeks before full release came out right but when i go to the black market and it's i don't it's just the black screen like i can't order any weapon you know still haven't figured that out yet but maybe you know we do another campaign and we'll see the full effects uh but yeah that's my thing with black market maybe it's like a time date or something maybe it's a bug i don't know i'm at the point in the game where i don't really care about the black market because unless you know you're i'm, I'm close to ending it maybe we'll try it again okay moving on from that unfortunately we couldn't get that right i took a look at the lottery it's pretty good uh it actually removes um i didn't know how it was gonna work but it's actually just a straight up there's a it's like monopoly and you just like in the sense that there are multiple outcomes on a board right and you just like roll the fucking dice or whatever roll the chances and it'll land on one of these like you know outcomes basically it makes it removes like the the pain of losing because before with blackjack you either won or lost with this new monopoly like lottery feature you don't lose as hard but you also don't win as hard like you're not gonna get half a million zalti anymore you'll get like 1k 2k maybe 5k if you're lucky or a nice little weapon but the lottery it seems to me has really been redesigned sort of as a mid game mid game um mid game merchant essentially you know, you're no longer going there if you're short on money or you want to exploit the early game if you get lucky. You're going there if you're looking for some weapons or looking to just have... It's like a time sink at this point. So, is it worth it? Personally, I don't think so. Because XP itself has been majorly buffed this patch. Like, you're getting a lot more XP for your kills. Way more. You're getting, like, mid-level troops are giving you 800. You don't even need to go to the lottery to get certain weapons and shit. You'll, you'll have the proficiency to just buy something straight out after you know a couple of fights now when we go moving forward to and now I, I personally i don't really um have any problems with this lottery change i think it's good it's just gonna take us a while to figure out how to best optimize it now moving on like i said towards um gun balance because i know this is something people really really want to uh you know discuss the sr i don't know if the devs watched the video that i made last time but the sr 100 feels a lot better uh you're you know what the accuracy required still remains the same. I think I've just adjusted, but I'm getting more reliable damage and more reliable modifiers. And that's huge for me, right? If I hit the upper body, I'm probably going to get a mu multiplier times two, and that's usually enough to one hit. Accuracy, still ridiculous, but the damage wasn't nerfed. It just seems like the multipliers are more in fact. Maybe it was a bug. Bottom line, SR100 feels a lot better. Now, speaking of the SR100, and legit this time, I cannot find that shit anywhere. So probably it it along with um some other weapons like the rocket launcher have actually become only available with questing. Now uh, I have checked and believe me guys, I have checked the weapon merchants all over this little northeast territory where pretty much is the late game, right? You start your early game here and you transition towards the east where it's late game, right? West to east. I have not found a single SR100 SV98M. I have just found the the scout and that's about it. Like, the best rifle I have found, or the rarest, is probably an AUG, right? An AUG, which used to be in the black market. I can't find the Groza no more, so maybe that's supposed to be in the black market. We'll see. But making the SR100 extremely rare, in my opinion... Oh, my God, I move this camera again because this time it's on the other side, right? But making this SR100 extremely rare, I support this change. If this is your best weapon in the game, it is 213 killing power, even with the Groza, you know? But if these are your two best weapons in the game that will destroy an opponent, Groza will usually 4-5 tap, this will usually 1 tap now, if you aim correctly. You gotta make this shit difficult to obtain. Extremely difficult or extremely expensive. I prefer extremely difficult because you could always gather money if you farm over time. Uh, this being difficult to obtain, you know, whatever, right? It's just... I like that it's difficult to obtain, and I like that you're being properly rewarded. If it were up to me, I'd actually up the damage even just a little bit more. Instead of 160, I'd probably make this 200 or 180. You know, I, I, I yeah, but hey, yeah, that's just me. Maybe that's the proper way to do balance or whatever. But no need to worry, guys. The SR100 seems to be calibrated again. I mean, they increased the marksmanship to like 13, I think. I think it used to be 12 or something. I don't know. It's been a while since I've like hadn't had the SR100. So yeah. Um, on the topic of the Groza, though, uh, probably want to buff that damage. I mean, 85 on 600, 600 velocity isn't that good. Um, but yeah. SR100 recalibrated. Now, 
Uh, when they said that, in fact, I think, am I near something right now? I think I, do I want to head somewhere? Honestly, no, because that could fuck things. Actually, here, perfect. We can go to Lubney and check what's the... Well, okay then. Apparently, they're putting it in the market for 80k. Uh... Oh my god. Okay, you know what? I, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna buy these two grosses right now for my playthrough. Um... You know, I wasn't expecting that. I thought they'd just be only uh, obtainable versus questing. Okay, my bad. Uh, huh. Make this more expensive. Uh, you cannot, th this cannot be this affordable. This needs to be 150k. I'm sorry, this needs to be ex extremely expensive. I have a million Zalty right now, and I'm telling you right now, this shit is too cheap. Make this 90, like, make this 100, 200k, up the damage to 200, and you got yourself a deal. You know, yeah, like this is, uh, pff, wow, they, I can't believe they actually put it in the fucking, um, they actually put this in the fucking regular traders? Yeah, I don't know, I'm not too much of a fan about that, not one bit. Um, okay, but anyway, moving on from that, your AUG, I was gonna go and show you guys an AUG, right? The AUG got moved into, uh, well now that doesn't even matter, because before I thought it was just the AUG that was in your weapon traders, and you just go with that as your de facto, you know, weapon for most of your troops. Now, never mind, Groza. Anyway, that point is completely redundant now because of the fact that you can get a Groza in your markets. Uh, yeah, completely done. However, what I was going to lead to at that point was that your Scar L got nerfed super hard. It's an, it's And like I suggested, it's now an early to mid game weapon. You get that in the early game, invest in your Scars. And then just use them as like regular guns, staple guns. They're reliable. They're not the best, but they'll get the job done for your early game troops. Okay, so what was the next thing that I wanted to talk about uh, before that kind of threw me for a fucking loop? Because I wasn't expecting that 100%. Oh, right. Your composition for your... Uh your your own composition so you guys are, know that i was mentioning running smoke grenades uh in the previous patch i've had some more time to test it out and i just don't think it's worth it anymore um i thought they would be good but the fact of the matter is there's a delay and the ai seems to have gotten a lot better at picking you out even with camouflage and this is including nighttime uh breaking line of sight with the ai is more difficult and you're better off now with the additional health kit than you are of a smoke grenade smoke grenades you know, they were a really good experiment. I mean, you could still run them, but they're just, especially at nighttime, you're better off with the additional health. And even in daytime, for that matter, if you're lacking the appropriate camouflage, right? I do hope they added more gear when it comes towards the uh, snow biome. Probably not going to happen just because it's just a, you suck it up at nighttime and win, right? But um, as I re-equip this, and it's daytime, so you don't really, oh, it's nighttime. Never mind, it's nighttime. Shit. But like I was saying, you don't really need, at least anymore, you don't really need to go with smoke grenades. They are really good, but the fact of the matter is they're just not good enough. The, de the delay on, you know, detonation or whatever, because it takes two seconds after you throw the thing and it hits the ground to pop, it's too much. If you're, if I'm, I'm only going to be using smoke grenades if I need to, like it's an emergency and I have to break sight immediately. Like it's bouncy physics or whatever. Like it's just that, that's not going to cut it for me. I mean, if they could lower that to maybe one second, maybe it gets better. Obviously this is something I'm still testing out, but right now, Smoke grenades just don't seem that worth it to me. Uh, maybe it'll change, but yeah. All right, so that's basically uh, everything I have to tell you guys about this patch. I mean, if you want, um, back to the another point, like just a TLDR, right? TLDR, Spetsnaz, biggest change. They're no longer, you know, longer going to run them in your army. Put them as your official guardsmen, and they will help you uh, make this little blitzing strategy viable, right? Even if you don't blitz, Spetsnaz are probably the best defenses you're going to get. That or FCA Grenadiers, if you have a bunch of them. Just put them into the city. They're just not that good anymore, and they're not worth really trying to... Uh, they're just not worth trying to maintain your army. They'll die too easily as well. All right? Next thing, Solitary Wolf Scouts. Uh, these guys are going to be your kind of, you know, the bulk of your army along with your um, Shock Troopers and your Mini-24 um, wielding machine gunners now obviously you're probably asking me what about your special forces now these guys are also extremely extremely good in fact i'd actually recommend putting them over 
um, a second bat, like many of the troops right now. Like if you had to pick between special, um, the special commandos or whatever, and your solitary wolf, you pick your special commando because that HP that they possess is so fucking insane. It's just, you cannot like, look at this guys. Let me show you guys without any weapons right now, level 13, this guy has 320 health, 20 health. That is going to survive a, like, it's just too good. His SMG is also 100. So keep in mind that if you decide to go with the SMG route, you're going to have something, someone very viable. Most likely, he's not going to have maxed out assault rifle, and that's fine. 320 HP is huge, and he's only a slightly slower, and he slightly can't see as good as your solitary wolf scouts. Who freaking cares? This guy's going to be able to take multiple hits, pop a med kit. You don't even need to give him a launcher. In fact, you give him a health kit, and boom, you have someone extremely viable. In fact, you double kit him, and he's not going to be like, it's going to be impossible to kill him. So yeah. Honestly, your special forces, uh, your commandos, you know, they're probably going to replace your solitary wolf scouts. Wolf scouts are probably for mid game. I don't see them, even though they have such great sight and speed, I just don't see them being long term because they have 263 health is so vulnerable. That's, yeah. But yeah, solitary wolf scouts, uh, special forces, if you can afford them later on. You're, what's never going to change is your shock troopers as well as your Cossack Rebels, which still have a place because they can shoot grenades, and your uh, Atop Federation machine gunners. Reason why Shock Troopers will always be here is because the HP, Atop Federation is going to have that nice little accuracy for suppressing fire. In fact, if I had to pick right now, I would pick Shock Troopers solely because of the fact that they have health. You just give them any 24s. But the Atop Federation machine gunners are still very good. Now, if the Atop Federation machine gunners had, let's say, 300 HP instead of 257 or 280, then you might be seeing a different tune from me. But the fact of the matter is, get both machine gunners, get your Spetsnaz into the fucking defense mode of a city, and get maintain your Cossack Rebels, phase out your federal uh, FCA Grenadiers, and you're good to go. And get your command special forces if you can. But yeah, guys, that's all I have for this video. Um, for you guys, at least. Uh, school is very busy, so thank you guys so much for the support. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys next time.